Good evening, visionaries. My name is Shelley Reed. I am president of Visionary Women, and on behalf of our entire board of directors, it is our great pleasure to welcome this evening our leadership members, our Visionary Circle members, our under 35 members, our guest students from the Women's Studies Program at Cal State Northridge, our guest students from USC, and all of our very special guests, male and female, who are with us. A very heartfelt and warm welcome. For those of you who are new to Visionary Women, we are a nonprofit community of women dedicated to the advancement of empowering other women. And as someone said, a woman on her own has power. Collectively, she has impact. And I would like everyone in the room who is a Visionary Women member to know that you are affecting change and you are part of that impact. In less than three years, we have been able to grant in excess of $1 million to a broad spectrum of organizations and initiatives that support women and girls. So for those of you who are members who are participating in this community, you have stood up, you have spoken out, and you are part of the community of this power pack. Now, this is the last of our 2019 salon programs. We've had a terrific year. Uh, for those of you who were here in the fall, Judy Chicago, Candace Bushnell, and of course, we're going out with a big bang this evening. <laughs> And we are extremely fortunate to have with us the founding member of Ms. Magazine, the co-founder of the National Women's Political Caucus, Ms. Foundation for Women, co-founder of the Women's Media Center, political activist, feminist organizer, icon, legend, Gloria Steinem. And Gloria will be joined in conversation this evening with another equally exciting, talented, inspiring young woman who is a poet, a social activist, and one of the most important inspirational speakers on the circuit today, Cleo Wade. Now, before we begin our program, I would like to extend a very heartfelt appreciation to George Nichols and his team at the Beverly Wilshire. George thought that we were expecting about 250 attendees tonight, and we are very proud to announce that we have 642 <laughs> attendees. So George, if you're in the room, please know that you have been so gracious and so generous and so kind to us, and we are deeply, deeply grateful for you hosting us here this evening. We'd also like to extend our profound thanks to our volunteers, most of whom are from our under 35 membership. So if you're under 35 in the audience, please look into becoming a member of our under 35 group. And then, of course, to our very special Nicole Johnson and Planet events. We could not do these kinds of events without your help. And last but not least, to our sponsor this evening, Gucci. <laughs> How lucky are we? So I'd like to invite to the podium now co-founder and fellow board member of Visionary Women, 
someone many of you might know. She is the two-time mayor of Beverly Hills, and I venture to speculate she will be the third-time mayor of Beverly Hills. Someone we adore, someone we revere, someone who walks into a room and opens it up with light and love and the most positive energy you can ever experience, the Honorable Lily Bossy. First of all, let's give a big thank you to our incredible president, Shelley Reed. Yes. I have to say, as I was walking around this evening, I, I felt almost out of body. It felt surreal to me, thinking that here we are, a room of over 600 women about to be with the Gloria Steinem and the Cleo Wade. It doesn't get better than this, right? Isn't this amazing? Thank you. And, you know, I really, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and, and it's hard for me to find the words because not only do we have the most incredible evening with Gloria Steinem and Cleo Wade, but we also have the best sponsor anybody could have and that's Gucci. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> but you know, I, I have to say for me, uh, many of you know uh, and I, uh, that I have for years, ever since we started uh, Visionary Women, I've always said that my one wish that I wanted for us was Cleo Wade. Um, she is somebody that has inspired me from the moment the first time I saw her TED talk, I watched it again and again and again, and I don't even know how many millions and billions of uh, followers she had. I was probably a few of the billions of watching it, but she, she got me at hello at that moment. Um, what, what I love about Cleo was she inspired me that it's okay to lead with love. It's okay to let your heart be open and not only is it okay, it's, it's the way to be. And, and that really spoke to me. And she has written, there we, it's true. Her first book called Heart Talk, and to my heart. And it was a tremendous sensation, big bestseller. And uh, this past month, she had a new book that came out and it's called Where to Begin, a small book about your power to create big change in our crazy world. And boy, oh boy, is that appropriate right now, right? So what really um, touches me so much about Cleo is that she is the real deal. She is everything that you're gonna see today Beautiful on the outside, but even more beautiful on the inside. She's called the Millennial Oprah. <laughs> she is listed as one of America's 50 most influential women and one of a in business. And for me, she's number one. So l let me please welcome my number one girl crush and the person that I'm so thrilled to have here amazing, big-hearted, beautiful Cleo Wade. Yes! Wow. And one more thing, I just ask after we have this wonderful, incredible talk, to please everybody sit down because we're going to take an epic selfie of all of us, okay? So again, I give you Cleo Wade and the Gloria Steinem. I know. <laughs> I was in my face. 
I am, um, you know, before I, I don't know if any of you have ever, ever been to my book first help, but the first thing I always do one in the audience to hug the person next to them and make sure. Oh, <laughs> here I come. Before we get started, because I can't wait to jump in and talk to you, and I know everyone can't wait to hear from you, um, I was asked to read a poem. And so I am going to invite you all to just uh, take this as an opportunity to, uh, it's, is it Monday? It's Monday? It's Monday. So uh, take, take a time. It's, it's not, it's, I always say that especially your rejection and shame. So I don't make for my sister-in-law. Uh, about uh, families being born and chosen. And you said, no child arrives as a blank slate. You might say that we need family and frustrate, and frustrated gardens. If we arrive as a petunia in a garden or of roses and lilies, we probably will need a friend, a neighbor, a teacher, or a grandmother, someone who knows a petunia when she sees one and helps us bloom as ourselves. And there is always hope, as the poet Alice Walker wrote in Revolutionary Petunias, the nature of this flower is to bloom. And I wanted to know who in your life has helped you bloom as yourself. Mm. You know, that's the hardest question. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think my mother and my grandmothers did because they had that philosophy. It happened that they uh, were theosophists. Do you know what theosophy was? I mean, it was very much bigger, I think, in you know, the last century than this one, uh, but it believes in reincarnation. So their theory of child rearing is wonderful because it is, you know, you as a parent or as a family are responsible for helping this child become who they already are. So, so my mother from saying you're <laughs> <laughs> But I, I do think my sister because she, uh, so I suppose I'm living out the unlived life of my mother in some ways, and I bet a lot of us here are, are doing that too. Uh, and of course, we hope that there will be a time in which each of us lives out our own lives. But I, I would put her first, and then in a funny way, I would put Louisa May Alcott, okay? She was, <laughs> she, 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 okay, I mean, she, right, she was a kind of revolutionary figure in our lives, right? And, and also she was a writer and made a living as a writer, um, and wasn't going to school that much until times. Uh, the personal is. And I wanted to talk to you about that because something that I think is interesting is I'll move through the world and I'm always kind of surprised how often I will hear someone say, I'm not political. Or they'll have something to say and they're like, but listen, I'm not political. And, I, and you know, do you think it's possible, anyone, do you think it's possible to not be political? No, because 